You may have seen Jeremy ask earlier if Rishi Sunak should resign over the Rwanda rebellion. We're continuing that discussion, but now we're asking if it is time for the Tories to bring back Boris Johnson. 0207 862 222 is the number you need for your views on this one. Rishi's premiership is in dire straits, according to Westminster Insiders, after 60 Tory MPs backed tough changes to the, his Rwanda plan. Now, the revolt was stoked by his predecessor, Boris Johnson, who tweeted his support for the rebels and said that the proposal, proposed laws must be legally robust. Now, the spectre of Boris has loomed large during a few rough days for Rishi. The damning poll, a damning revolt poll also revealed that the Tories are set to lose 196 of their seats won by Boris in 2019 at the next general election, including all of those in the Red Wall. In response, top Boris ally Nadine Doris tweeted that only he could save the country from a Labour landslide, which she claimed would consign us to socialism. That's what she says. So we're asking, should the Tories bring back Boris? Should he be back into the fold, even back into power? Uh, as a Hail Mary, what do we think? Henry, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, I Bring think we Boris. need to. No, it's really funny, uh, Boris demanding that the Rwanda legislation should be legally robust. Boris, the most chaotic and anarchic prime minister we've had in living memory. Not, People need to not stop... generally known for his eye for detail no, either. No, 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 no. People need to stop drinking this Boris Kool-Aid. <laughs> I mean, um, he might be very popular among Tory backbenchers or the faithful at party conference, but not really in the country. I mean, people voted for him in large numbers on the promise of getting Brexit done when that was the biggest issue facing the country. Now it's not. The biggest issue is well, cost of living, that. cost of living and NHS, two things that he failed at singularly when he was um, um, migration, uh, three things that he failed at singularly when he was prime minister. Taxes went up, you know, illegal migration went up. He didn't solve these things at all. Didn't uh, bring back more nurses, more and GPs, more police officers. So if you look at his three years in office, they were not a success. And when he left, his approval rating was minus 45%. And only two prime ministers in living memory have had worse ratings when they left, Margaret Thatcher and Liz Truss. Mm. So I don't think Boris has that cut through anymore. And if it, the people bring him back, it will just remind us of just what a chaotic spectacle it was when he was in power. He makes people laugh, he's funny, he's got that slightly kind of Trumpy kind of jokey factor, but he's not a serious person for running the country. He did actually win the, the biggest landslide in electoral history. No, I think you're forgetting that. In, in, anyway. in electoral history? Yes. No, yes. not in electoral well, what history. Do you, what yes. do you think Carol did? No, he... He had a, 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 what was it, a majority. Of, a, a majority of Aid Blair got 179. No, no, no. no this, this was this was a, this was a landslide. No, but Blair got 179 majority. No, I don't. In think 1997, I don't 179. Think well, anyway. And then 167. The okay, so why? Later. Okay. Well, I think I'm it's not the Tories' largest majority yes. rather than the largest. Tories. I, think, I think Margaret Thatcher's one of Margaret Thatcher's no. majorities in '83. I think it was. Longer. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Let's check. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Fact, fact check. Fact check. Fact check. In the gallery. Yes. Please let them hear. To confirm, I'm right. I'm sure that was the biggest. Since, since 87, I'm being told. There you go. There you, since 87, okay. you said, you said well, ever. Okay, okay, all right. Let's Q -E -D. Just now and move in. Carol, he is an election winner, You've got that's for sure. <laughs> and if there's anybody that can rise from the ashes, it is Boris Johnson, surely. You know what, I think this Boris thing is a sideshow. I, mean, I, I think it, he's not going to get back. There are too many haters in the Tory establishment to allow him to come back. And, and I don't think he wants to come back. He's having a life of Riley at the moment. He's earning millions with public speaking, he's writing his memoirs, and he can lob in grenades from the sidelines, which is what he did this week by saying. Lots and lots of cheap shots. It has to be robust. So I don't I don't think he wants to come back and I don't think even his biggest supporters would say that he could save the Tory party now. The Tory party is on self-destruct. They know the, all these Tory rebels who may or may not vote against this Rwanda bill tonight, they know that if they vote against this bill, the Tories are 150% finished, not just 100% finished, it's completely over from them. And, and they're all going to lose their so jobs. So there's no chance. And they're idiots. I don't, think, I don't think there's any chance of Boris coming back. And I don't think even if he did, he could save them. Because, you know, there's no appetite in the public for yet another leadership election. And if they stage one, and if Rishi chucks his toys out the pram tonight, if he gets defeated and says, that's it, we're going to the country, all of these MPs who made this happen are going to lose their jobs. And I don't know why they can't say that. All the public are doing watching 
watching this is saying, what a load of immature children you And it's are. also public that has seen four Tory governments yes. since 2010. How much more time do they want? What is the offer it's to the country a, next time? Not, not there comes that, a time in the lifespan Labour of a government... Us, but comes okay, a, you're talking over each other. Sorry, sorry. sorry. There comes um, a moment in the lifespan of a government or a series of governments of a particular hue where the right. public feel you've had enough. The same thing happened in 1997. The Tories, 1979, Margaret Thatcher, 1997, John Major. And John Major had turned the economy around, but the public said, we don't care, we've had enough, bye-bye. I, I tend to think you're right, uh, but but I also think that, that I think the Labour government are going to destroy this country. You know, really? I do. The difference you know, between well, them and no, the Tories well, is not so great. On, I just shut up and let you talk Sorry. there, Henry. Uh, there, was a, there was a massive poll no, no, this week, true. as you very well know, that said nine out of ten people, <laughs> nine, nine out of ten constituencies in this country want controlled immigration. We know Starmer's not going to do that. He has no plan to do it. He doesn't want to do it. He wants uh, us to rejoin but, okay, the EU. OK, so here's ah. somewhere where Boris Johnson takes a tough stance, and I suppose that's why we're asking whether Maybe, it is time yeah. to bring Boris Johnson back, yeah. because it is a big thing in the minds of the British public. public. Helen from Dorset, you're up first on the phone lines. What do you think? Should Boris come back into the fold? Yes, definitely. Why? What makes you want him back because in the fold? Because I like him. I trust him. I'm fed up with listening to people putting him down. OK. You, I'll you, tell Helen, you what. Take, take me back into you trust him, because he is, he is known for telling porkies or certain, yes, certainly having I an interesting know. relationship with the truth. But he's, he also nearly died of COVID. Yeah, Nobody but does that make him a good that. Prime Minister? Pardon? Does that make him a good Prime Minister? In fact, that's something he apologised over, didn't he, into the, in the inquest, is that actually he, he feels like maybe he didn't take COVID seriously enough at the beginning. Yes, he did. But we were all in the dark about that, weren't we? Yes. Yeah. He got through Brexit. He got through COVID. And he was stabbed in the back by Rishi Sunak. Helen, can I say something quickly? She's right. Boris is the yes. architect of stab... He's the stabber-in-chief. He stabbed David Cameron in the back, did he not? He stabbed Theresa May in the back, did he not? So, no. poetic justice. But Rishi Sunak stabbed him in the back. Helen's quite right. And all the, no, all no, no. the voters... Rishi Sunak was one of Rishi 60 Sunak MPs who resigned. stabbed yeah. him in the back. Rishi You're Sunak... You're wrong. Rishi Sunak stabbed him. But what about his tweets? Do you not think they're a little jab at Rishi? Well, ah. well, to, well, to be fair, to be fair, let me back Helen up here. Yes, there might be a jab at Rishi, but when someone's lost you your job, yes, you would have a little jab at them, especially when they're not doing your job very well. You know, for Boris, for, you know, it's all very well you all saying whatever about Rishi, but he is not doing his job. The main thing that affects people in this country above the economy is immigration, and Rishi no, has not. No, yes, no, it is. No, no. Every poll Number one is says, national health and no, the economy. No, it's not. There, it depends as poll you look at, Henry. Uh, there's a number of polls that say... I'm not quoting a GB News poll here. Put, and neither am I, and I don't okay, work but, for GB News all the right. time, as you well know. OK, OK. And that's a, that's a cheap job. Ooh, cheap that, shot. It, it's a cheap shot. And you, Sorry. Cheap for I you. own it. Uh, uh, good, you should do. <laughs> so, the bottom line is there are lots of polls done that say immigration. When 9 out of 10, the latest poll, yep. 9 out of 10 constituents in this country think we should control immigration. Yes. 75 out of 100, uh, 650 constituencies think immigration is too high. That, you're going to argue with that? I'm not arguing that's that. A GP but, but, no, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. But that doesn't mean that they think it is the number one issue for the country. The number one issue for the country is the economy and the National Health Service, both of which will be affected if we go crazy on controlling immigration okay, be, to the extent that the hardcore right-wing Tories do. You Can we just also talk no, about on. the station? Harry does a lot of work. You talk to me. Nobody watches your station. No, but anyway, no, no. that's bad. Times Radio. Times Radio. Really, Enough right. of the cheap jabs. You both well, sort of agree that Boris Johnson shouldn't come back, so let me bring somebody else in. Joining me now is Alex Storey, who's co-founded the Bring Back Boris campaign. Now, Alex, your accusations against former Chief Whip Chris Pincher contributed, actually, to Boris being brought down in 2022, but you seem to want him back in charge. That's unusual. These accusations against Chris Pincher weren't accusations, they're actually things that happened to me. So, um, you know, these are real life experiences. Uh, on the Boris front, the, the reason why I set up the Bring Boris Back campaign was not necessarily because I thought he was a good prime minister or a bad prime minister, it's because the principle of democracy were important. The moment you allow a few lobbyists like Sunak and others to remove an elected representative is the moment you decide that democracy is no longer 
uh, tenable and worth it. And that's the issue. The fact is that he had a massive mandate. That mandate for our leaders means nothing. And of course, that means that for you and for me and for everybody watching at home, democracy in the end is, is a bust. Nobody really cares. And it's fact, it's not just that people are don't like Sunak. It's the fact that they are bored, stupid, with the uh, the political class and the bureaucratic class that shows no wit, uh, no charm, no panache. They all speak in the same language. And at least the thing that Boris had was a little bit of charm and, uh, and, and humor. But we don't have any of that. We're just led by mediocrities. And I think whether it's the Labour Party, the Lib Dems, or the Conservative Party, it looks pretty bleak. But the most important thing is, if you allow the ballot box to be meaningless, what you end up with is somebody like Sunak or Starmer or Pauline uh, uh, from the post office or whatever it is. You just get run by mediocrities. And that's what we have. OK, well, you, so you've said Boris Johnson had a mandate in 2019. Do you think he would be given the same one in the election coming up? Do you think he could win it for the Conservative Party? Well, Sunak is about as popular as an emanation in a in a spacesuit, right? <laughs> so there's no way that uh, Sunak can win anything. Sunak lobbied his way to power. Yeah. You know, he didn't get there. There was no leadership context that saw him win and get to the to ten Downing Street. Uh, Boris is obviously much more popular than that. At the moment, it's about rescuing a sinking ship. But we have to go back a little bit before. Um, uh, Boris and see that Theresa May was equally as unpopular as Sunak. She got 9% of the votes, or actually slightly less than 9% during the European election in 2019. That's why she was removed. It wasn't an act of stabbing her in the back. It's the population said, we do not like you because we now know who you are. Um, for, for Boris, what we have is somebody who was elected by the people of this country, but was judged by his enemies. But, but Alex, right? can I say Not something to you very quickly? Alex, what you say would be true if we had a presidential system, and I know we are getting there slowly, but surely, but it wasn't a personal mandate. It was a mandate for the Conservative Party. And of course, the party which is returned with the most members to the House of Commons forms a government, and out of them, one of them will become primus inter pares, first among equals. That's our system. And that's one of the reasons why John Major, Gordon Brown, Theresa May, Liz Truss, were not elected with a personal mandate or were, did not face the country as leader of the party, but became prime minister. It is part of our unwritten constitution. Carol, you wanted to jump Yes, I a quick question, but two questions. Do you think Boris wants wait, to wait, come wait, back, wait, Alex? Let me answer that. Oh, hold me on. OK, Alex, me, answer, answer, answer that, Henry. It... I didn't know there was a question. Answer yeah. Henry, and then Carol can jump in. I will not, sorry, my apologies. I didn't want to, to cut the, the young lady, uh, the blonde oh, young no, lady, that no, no, looks no, very attractive Alex. from where I'm sitting. That's very nice. Um, but, <laughs> But um, I, th there's two things. It's it's the, it, the the way the way to to explain his defenestration is the way that you've is is the explanation you've given. But actually, we see and we know that leaders matter a great deal to the electorate. So we, as I said, Theresa May had no no support, and her pop and the the vote of the Conservative went down to nine percent or slightly below, as I said in 2019. That same year. With Boris, the Tory party got 43 or 40 per, 44% of the votes. Leadership matters hugely in any institution. And the way that he was removed is the, is, is the thing that is the claw that stays in people's, uh, in people's throats. It's the, it's the thing that people will not forgive the Conservative Party for because they voted for this guy and they got the exact opposite. They got, Alex, I, they, they voted in, for charm and what... We're going to run out of time. My apologies. Yeah. One, do you think he wants to come back? And two, do you think the Tory establishment will let him come back? Well, I know personally that he's bored at the moment and uh, he he feels that the, the job has been left undone. And to be honest, we all agree that the way he was treated was outrageous. And this this uh, the way that he was judged by people who detested him because he had a glass of Prosecco was outrageous. And I think all of us agree with it, whether you're Labour or not. Uh, that's not the way that you treat your leaders, so uh, really. He wants to come and back. if you compare, so he wants well, to come the, back. The, so, so the the thing is, obviously, he would like to come back. He would like to to finish the chapter of his of his book in a way. And and uh, you know whether it's as prime minister or not, it remains to be seen. It's probably very unlikely. The Tory establishment has revealed itself for what it is, and the Tory establishment is very much like the Labour and the Lib Dem party. They hate. 
uh, personalities. They do not want somebody like Boris because they call him a maverick. We, the electorate, like mavericks. We vote for mavericks. We like people who are slightly different and who speak differently, who speak like human beings, who show a little bit of... Um, uh, you know the, the the George Galloway fine brimstone when when uh, when uh, uh, when asked questions. We don't want bureaucratic uh, automatons that that sound the same whichever party you 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 you've got in front of you. Okay. So the Tory establishment hates him with a passion, and he would like to come back. And the Tory party will destroy itself before they bring him back. Interesting, Alex Story. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, co-founder of the Bring Back Boris campaign. Let's find out what the rest of our viewers think about bringing back Boris. Kato, we're going to start with you in London. Would you like to see Boris back in the fold? Hi there, thanks for taking the call. Um, I enjoy watching the show as well. And I think this is one of those rare topics where both of the guests seem to agree as well. Yeah, yeah. it certainly is. Rare, Are you going to disagree agree. or agree with the panel? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. What I'll say is, so if, if it's regarding migrant laws, I'll say one thing first and foremost. It's clearly a valid issue on such a small island. However, the UK, in my opinion, needs to be aware, especially post-Brexit, um, of our international reputation in how we deal with these things, as well as our country's internal needs and priorities. Mm -hmm. And I think that given the decision by the courts, I know that they, as far as I'm sure, as, as far as I'm aware, they said that amendments could be made, but they also suggested that Rwanda wasn't the only country. So the fact that Britain's pressing ahead with that uh, quite okay, So I'm getting that you don't support Boris on, on his migration stance. <clears throat> uh, what else? So I would argue that... Um, the previous caller that called Helen, um, I think she would need to understand that Boris actually, own, as far as I know, as far as I've, I've heard, he only took COVID seriously after he caught it himself. Mm -hmm. um, I think he admitted to so much. He yeah, actually apologised for it. You know, he was saying he was going around the hospital shaking hands and the next thing he seemed to be in, in intensive care. I mean, Yeah, and, and it is a tough you. balancing act. When you're, when you're trying to be an approachable prime minister during a pandemic mm -hmm. and the very rules of the pandemic means that you can't really be approachable, it's difficult, I get it. But, but, um, Ketu, but why, I would say that... Why is it wrong that he would take it seriously after he got it? No one took it seriously at the beginning. We didn't believe... Yeah, people did. That's not... No. People did. People were in lockdown before lockdown happened. People... Boris Johnson didn't. We all didn't. thought it was a, a virus. We all thought it was a virus that was going to harm some people not others, but when he, but but why, why is it wrong for him to get it and think, oh my God? Well, I suppose what Kate is saying is acting. that you would hope that the leader of yes. the country would take any potential pandemic in an incredibly serious manner. He missed how many meetings before it happened and was shaking people's hands, even though he was told by scientists that's what he shouldn't be but doing. But he's been told Kate lots of things by scientists. Thank you very much for your call, Patricia from Norfolk. We're getting lots of calls on this. What's your thoughts bringing Boris back? Do you think it'd be a good idea? He does have a huge amount of supporters in the general public. I think definitely he should come back. And the way his party treated him, well, I thought it was absolutely very childish. Patricia, you, how have... does he come back? How does he go back into the Conservative fold? Or does he come back as an independent? Come back as a leader once the Tories have been beat, I suspect. It's up to him to choose which one he... what people he's going to have to work with him. So he can only come back if he's the leader, then he can start making those decisions? That's right, and I think that would be the best because well, the way they kicked him in the thighs, I thought was absolutely shocking. And, and what, if, how will I, you feel if he doesn't I, come back I, into the fold then, Patricia? Pardon? How will you feel if he doesn't come back if the Conservatives don't let him I back? I will never Does... vote Conservative again. Oh, and so what, and, you're going to be voting for Starmer? And friends of mine have said the same because they hated the way his party treated him. But, Patricia, if you do not vote for the Tories, you're going to get Keir Starmer. Uh, well, that's too bad. That's... Oh, is it? I think it might be more than well, that. Well, hang on a minute. You know, I mean, it was Michael Heseltine who used to talk about the Conservatives being the natural party of government. That might have been the case back in the 50s or whenever, but not anymore. You know, we have a uh, multi-party system. It is good for democracy that we have the yang to the ying. And there are lots of people out there who don't agree. I mean, the... The leader of the opposition the people manage to get elected in this country... his mind on upon 40... anything. Hey? The leader of the opposition can't make his mind well, upon but a Boris Johnson policy. flipped and flopped on Brexit. Well, this guy, Starmer, does it for a living all no. the time. He doesn't stick to a single policy. Well, one, of the, one of the things I worry about, Patricia, is that people seem to think that the Conservative Party treated Boris Johnson really, really badly. They did. But it's the, it's the members of Parliament who see you up 
close and personal. And they were working with him every single day. And his ministers were being sent out to bat to say one thing, only to be undermined within an hour of having defended so Boris why? Johnson. And, you know, I mean, because it was, what they were being sent out to say was not true. And in the end, 60 ministers resigned because they could no longer work with him. It didn't happen on day one. It happened three years so into the job. So why is the majority of Red Wall MPs now saying they regret ousting him? I don't know. Well, they are. are they speaking the truth? I don't know. Well, Patricia, well, thank you very much not? for your call. Annette from Worcestershire, what's your views on Boris Johnson? Should he come back? Would you like to see him as leader, potentially? No, and I don't think he should even be mentioned on the television anymore either. And um, I know he's coming back onto GB News, but I've actually written to them and, uh, and I've actually said I won't be watching GB what's News anymore. Thank you very much. Well, because, first of all, when he was mayor of London, he had a four-year affair in our time. And um, so uh, that wasn't good for somebody like that to become prime minister. And, um, you know, um, it, it just wasn't reliable. And if you can't on, get Annette, your own house in order... Hold on. If we banned the mention, Annette, of every man who has had an affair on TV, we would be left with very few men we could mention. <laughs> yes. John Major, for a start, had so, an affair while he was... So, Annette, we're not going to start mentioning people's names. I'm feeling very sorry for all men out there. But it is true. And women as well. If we ban mentioning every woman who had ever had an affair, we'd be left with very few people. You can't. People can't be all wholly good, can they? We have to take people in a whole. And also, that's his private life. Yeah, it is different, though, when... Uh, yes, but it might be private life, but it's in our time that this was all happening and we were paying for this. OK. Well, so and, do you feel uh, the same way the about other... Matt Hancock, then? Should we never discuss him? He shouldn't be on any No, TV we're talking shows. about Boris Johnson at the moment. So no, no, I, don't I know, know, I know but I'm just wondering whether it's specifically <laughs> Boris Johnson you don't like being mentioned because of his affairs or, or whether it's just everybody, every man that's had an affair. No, 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 no. It's it's Boris Johnson because he, he puts forward as if he's the best man on the uh, planet and he was poor when he moved no, into no, uh, become doesn't. Prime Minister and he borrowed money from the BBC chap who got the sack. Oh, well, uh, that wasn't right either. And um, now um, he's got finding the pandemic and all of these things. If that was an ordinary chap in an ordinary job, he'd never have another chance ever again and it'd be against him on all his records. Yeah. So I've, got, I've, got I've got to back, got to back and it up on this really quickly. No, no, What's no, no, Okay. So we're running out of Sorry. time, but Annette, we should also say that these are alleged affairs. Uh, thank you for your call. Thanks for all your calls on this. We are going to have to move on after the break.